Lord, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for your people, your servants. Thank you for all our leaders who are here and those who are connected with us for this development session. We're asking, Lord, you open our eyes of understanding that we behold great truths of your word in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you keep us awake and your word will stir us up to move on in the will of God in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we're looking at Ezra chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse 1 all through to verse 4. Ezra chapter 1, reading from verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and he put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you. Of all his people, his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts besides the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Those words I've read to you and we've read together are very instructive, very great in the life of the nation of Israel and of Judah in particular. They had been carried away captive for 70 years into the Babylonian captivity. And Daniel and other prophets like him had read the scriptures in Jeremiah and also would have read in Isaiah that the time of their restoration was very near. In fact, we are told that Daniel studying the book of uh, Jeremiah. He went to pray and waited upon the Lord, confessing the sin of the nation, confessing the sin that brought them into captivity. And now said, Lord, the time has come. We we'll spent 70 years here, and it's about time we returned. The Lord had given the promise in Jeremiah that they will call upon him and that he will hear and when he heard, he will answer their prayer and he will be delivered from captivity. At this time now, we would say they were just about to return. And it's at the eve of restoration. That is when the doors, when the time is very near. And the deliverance and the restoration is at the doors. We say it's the eve of that deliverance. Is the eve of that restoration. Is the eve of that return from captivity. And so tonight, we're looking at this to understand that at this eve of their return, at this eve of their restoration, they had something to do. And they had a part to play. I'm talking to you tonight on the great awakening on the eve of restoration. The great awakening on the eve of restoration. Uh, let's come to Daniel chapter 9. And you will see the expected restoration. 
And because the time was very near, they needed to wake up and realize our time is near. We're getting out of captivity. It says in Daniel chapter 9, verse 1, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. He realized the time was near. It's about time the people of God will get out of this place and they will go to their land and they'll go to the land of Israel and to the land of Judah. And you realize the time in which Daniel was living. I'm reading from Daniel chapter 1 verse 21. Daniel chapter 1 verse 21. It says in verse 21, And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Daniel was a man of the book. A man of the book of God. A man that will search the scriptures and search the word of God. And as soon as Cyrus came on board and became a king over the land, when they kind of uh, swept off uh, the son of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel realized something. The coming of Cyrus is a prophetic indication that something good was about to happen to the nation. Come to chapter 6 and verse 28. Daniel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 28. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Cyrus the Persian. What do we know about Cyrus the Persian? Isaiah had been given that name 160, about uh, 600 years uh, before, or 160 years before that Cyrus was born. Look at Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44, you want to understand that this prophecy had come more than a century, more than one and a half centuries before Cyrus was born. And Daniel comes seeing that Cyrus has come now to the place of reigning. He knew that this was exactly the point when the people of God should be expecting to come out of captivity. Isaiah chapter 44, and I'm reading from verse 28. Verse 28, that says on, of Cyrus, this is about, this about God, the Almighty, this is the God that knows the end from the beginning. And he said concerning Cyrus, He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. And so as Daniel read all this, he looked at the prophecy of Jeremiah that 70 years will be accomplished in the captivity. And he calculated and he saw that the 70 years had expired. And so he knew the time of leaving Babylon was very near. Not only that, he saw that Cyrus came to the throne and he looked at the prophecy of Isaiah and he realized because of that prophecy of Isaiah that Cyrus coming in means that our time of departure is now at hand. Look at chapter 45. Chapter 45, I'm reading from verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have pulled in. I have a holding in and to subdue the nations before him and I will lose the loins of kings and to open before him the two leaped gates and the gates that uh, shall not be shut and I will go before thee the Lord talking to Cyrus before he was born the Lord talking about Cyrus before he was born the Lord revealing what he will do before this man Cyrus was born, I will go before thee. 
and make the crooked places straight. And I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, calling him by name before he was born, Calling him by name before even his parents got married. Calling him by name when the gentle nations did not know anybody called Cyrus will ever come. It's called him by name. I am the God of Israel. And then he goes on to say in verse 4, For Jacob, my servant's sake, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have so named thee. Though thou hast not known me. And so we see from the prophecies that something was going to happen. And when all these came together, that is all these details of prophecy, all these different parts of prophecy, when everything came together, the people of Judah who were reading their scriptures, who were reading those prophecies, they knew the time was very near. That's the time of restoration. Our restoration is near and it's at the very doors. That's why we refer to this time and this period as the eve of restoration. And there should be a great awakening even in the church now as the church is looking at our own time and we're looking at the prophecies concerning us, concerning the church, we should understand that the time of our departure is at hand. And as they should have had a great awakening so that they will know now that uh, our restoration, now that our time is near, that they will prepare the same thing for the church. Look at Isaiah chapter 21. Isaiah chapter 21, I'm reading here from verse 11. Isaiah 21, verse 11, the body of Duma, he calleth unto me out of seer, watchman, what of the night? That's what we should be asking ourselves now, watchman, what of the night? And then it says, watchman again, what of the night? The night of tribulation will come upon this world. And we need to understand the church will get to the morning of rapture. And the morning of being caught away. And it says in verse 12, the watchman said, the morning cometh. First, the man was asking about the night. And was asking, you know, what of the night? But the answer came, instead of talking about the night first, it says, the morning cometh. And also, after that morning, the morning of resurrection, and the morning of the rapture, when the saints of God will be cut up and they are gone, after that also, the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. Make your preparations. Get ready. Because we are not leaving the church. It's leaving uh, on the eve of the rapture. They were leaving at that time of Ezra. Ezra chapter 1. At the eve of restoration. We are leaving now at the eve of the rapture. It tells us in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We're looking at verse 33. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 33 here. It says, So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Just like uh, Daniel, and like all those uh, Jewish people, when they read all those prophecies that they read in Isaiah, that they read in Jeremiah, they knew the time for them was at hand. And now the church, as we read the prophecies and we see the things that are happening, you know, it says we should know that the time is at hand. In verse 34, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. It's saying that we should wake up because all the events around us, they show that the time of our departure is at hand. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The words of God will not pass away. Look at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 34. 
Luke chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 34. It says in verse 34, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time, take heed to yourselves, as we see the day approaching. As we see that the time of the rapture is very near. As we see all the fulfillment of the prophecies of God, that Christ about, is about to come back, and the dead will rise up, and then those of us who are alive will be caught up together with them. As we see that day approaching, wake up and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with soft eating and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that they come up upon you unawares for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth i wanted to imagine the children of israel the children of judah who are in babylon they were not reading their scriptures they were not reading isaiah they were not reading uh, uh, jeremiah and the announcement came to them suddenly unawares they were surprised what's happening and many of them had settled in babylon they had built houses in babylon they established businesses in babylon and now the call is coming to them anyone that wants to go back the time of restoration had come it came to them unawares they were not ready verse 36 watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man we're looking at first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 i read from verse 1 First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Are you so taught? Are you, are you so sure that we don't even need to write about this to you? Because you already know. And you are conscious of the fact that with all the events around us, the time of our departure and the time of return and the time of the rapture is so very near. And those people should have understood that as you calculate the years and see that 70 years have gone, as you see that Cyrus, that Isaiah named, that Isaiah mentioned, 160 years before he was born and now he's born now he's grown up now he's taking the kingdom now the children of judah shall have understood the time is near as many people did not take note of what had happened so many people in the church today they're not taking note of what has happened and paul the apostle said he said of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need as your right unto you for ye yourselves know perfectly ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so cometh as a thief in the night he'll come suddenly he'll come when many people are not prepared and yet if they were reading their scriptures if they were reading the prophecies of the word that christ gave that the apostles gave they will know that the time of the rapture is very near for when they shall see peace and safety then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but she believers but she saved ones but she sanctified ones but she that are waiting for the coming of the lord and ye reading the scriptures and reading the prophecies and knowing that the time is very near but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief it will not overtake us as a thief we'll be ready and will be prepared and knowing that we're living at such a delicate time at the time when the rapture is very close at the doors we'll take heed and we will have a great awakening a great awakening in our spiritual lives a great revival in our spiritual life so that by the grace of god you and i will be ready for that coming event in jesus name and also we will there be a great awakening of evangelism that we are telling other people the time is at hand get up the time it has hand if you are going to decide to follow the lord here is the time this is the time and the lord will help us to have fire in our hearts in our spirit 
in our bones will be so awakened, thoroughly awakened. We'll do the last bit of the work we have to do before he comes back in Jesus' name. The great awakening on the eve of restoration. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the revelation preceding the proclamation. Cyrus made a proclamation. Watch at the preceding statements of Scripture and the preceding prophecies of Scripture. Before that proclamation came, number one, the revelation preceding the proclamation. Number two, the response of people with prophetic perception. There were people in the land, in the land of Babylon, and they had prophetic perception. And because of that prophetic perception, it's like they're already gathering their loads together. They're already getting prepared. Even before that proclamation came, because they had read their scriptures, Cyrus will be born and Cyrus will reign and I will command him, he will fulfill my word and tell the children of Israel in captivity, go back to your land. And when Cyrus came, these people, they were men and women of prophetic perception. And then they calculated. 70 years have passed already and any moment from now release will come any moment from now restoration will come they had spiritual perception they had prophetic perception and because of that prophetic perception when the announcement came and the proclamation came they responded immediately the response of people with prophetic perception number three the remnant Big church in prophecy. The remnant, big church in prophecy. Actually, it wasn't everybody that went back to Jerusalem. It's just a small fraction of them, 42,000 plus, less than 50,000. And you know, they've been there for years, 70 years, grandparents and parents and children, and they have, they have multiplied in the land of, uh, of Babylon. If you remember the children of Israel that came to Egypt and then about 230 years less than 400 years you see how they multiplied so much and now these people have been there for 70 years they had multiplied and the people that went back they were just a remnant and that will be fulfilled again at the time of the coming of the Lord because it's going to be a remnant that will go with the Lord when he comes point number three the remnant big church in prophecy. We're coming to number one. Tell me your number one over there. Tell me where's the preacher's voice. The revelation preceding the proclamation. I want you to look at Second Chronicles chapter 36. Second Chronicles chapter 36 and look at it, verse 22. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. That the word might be accomplished. Jeremiah had spoken many years before. Jeremiah had prophesied, had given the revelation many years before. And now so that that word of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation, proclamation throughout all his kingdom. And he put it also in writing, saying, Thus say Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdom of the earth as the Lord God of heaven given me and he has charged me he has commanded me he has commissioned me to build him a house in Jerusalem which is in Judah who is there among you of all his people the Lord is God be with him let him go up the chains are broken let him go up the Babylonian captivity now comes to an end. Let him go up. And all the things that tied you down before, everything is removed. Now you are released and you can return to your land. This is the moment of restoration. But before that proclamation, you understand, the prophecies had gone earlier. 
and the those who had eyes to see, minds to understand, hearts to digest, they should have known the time was coming. We're coming back to Isaiah again, chapter 44. Isaiah again, chapter 44, and I'm reading here from verse 28. This is the revelation that came before this proclamation came. And this was many, many years before. And if we are thoughtful, and if we are vigilant, and if we understand the word that is given to our hands, we read it, we study it, and then we look at the fulfillment that is coming, and we wake up, and then we rush on to say, the time is about to be fulfilled, and therefore, we are going to make it. I will make it at the time of the rapture in Jesus' name. Look at verse 28 that, that says of Cyrus, He is my shepherd. And, uh, you know, that's a very special word concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the shepherd. And the, the Lord said of other people, my servant. He said of Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. But there is no other figure in the Old Testament that God referred to as my shepherd. And he raised up, was going to raise up the Cyrus. He'll be like a shepherd watching over the sheep and telling the sheep to go to a place of safety and to come out of the jungle of Babylon, come out of the darkness of Babylon, come out of the captivity of Babylon. And he referred to him as my, as my, as my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. And the pleasure of the Lord is that the nation of Israel, the nation of Judah, will not perish in captivity. But that the time of return, the time of their restoration will come. And this is the pleasure of the Lord. And God said that Cyrus will fulfill that pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Chapter 45, Isaiah 45, we're looking at verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to his anointed. Once again, remember that Jesus. Christ especially referred to as the anointed and as Jesus will come and catch the saints away and take them to heaven and so the same way this Cyrus is going to be used of God to bring a release a restoration a return to the children of Israel to the people of Judah to go back to their land thus says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus whose right hand I have pulled him to subdue the nations before him and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaves gates and the gates shall not be shut that is um, all those gates of the ba Babylonian kingdom will be open he will go straight in and he will deliver the people he will relieve the people he will go in and conquer uh, Belshazzar and after conquering Belshazzar he will now take over the throne and eventually the fulfillment of this prophecy will come that through him deliverance, release, redemption, restoration will come to the people of Judah. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of, of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of a secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name before you were ever born, I am God, the God of Israel, and Jacob for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name, and have so named thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord. And there is none else, there is no God beside me. I guarded thee, though thou hast not known me. Before he even knew the Lord, before he knew that this was of the Lord, the Lord was already preparing him so that the people of Judah through him will be delivered. How did that happen? That's uh, the very strength of prophecy. That's the very power of prophecy. Look at chapter 46. 
Isaiah chapter 46, I read from verse 9. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. How? Look at verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end, the end of captivity. I declare that from the very beginning. Do you remember when Jeremiah was ministering to the children of Israel? They were still in their land. They had not even gone out of captivity. And nobody heard about Nebuchadnezzar. That Nebuchadnezzar will come and take all these people away until Isa began to tell Ezekiah. And he said, do you know some, something? You know, all these Babylonians that have come, they'll come back. And they will take every precious thing out of the land of Judah. Before that time, Ezekiel knew nothing. And then Jeremiah came and he said, Babylon is coming. And the king of Babylon is going to invade the land and is going to destroy a lot of places and will take the people away onto Babylon. But then at the same time, declaring the age, the end of that captivity and the end of that suffering from the very beginning. 70 years will be upon the people of Judah. After the 70 years, then they will return. That's what God said, declare in the end from the beginning and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done seen my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure it tells us in Jeremiah what uh, we'll be talking about the very fact that there was revelation before the proclamation of Cyrus Cyrus does not just wake up and say, now the people of Judah, the time has come, you can return to your land. There's a lot of revelation before that proclamation ever came to them. Jeremiah chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 25. Verse 8, therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, and against the inhabitants thereof, and against all the nations round about, and uh, will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and unheasing and perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon how many years? 70 years. The Lord declared the end from the beginning. He said there's going to be captivity. And from before they even went to captivity, the Lord had declared they're going to captivity and they're going to be there for 70 years, telling us the terminal end of that captivity. Then it goes there to say, and it shall come to pass, verse 12, when 70 years are accomplished. When 70 years are accomplished, at the end of the 70 years that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, says the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans we, and will make it a perpetual desolation. And so that they were fulfilling the will of God in making the children of Israel to go into captivity did not mean that they will not suffer for their own wickedness too. In chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 29, reading from verse 10. It says, For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good words toward you in causing you to return to this place 
That's Revelation before the proclamation of Cyrus. So the proclamation of Cyrus was not just coming out of the blue. And it's not just coming, hanging somewhere. There was a foundation to that, a revelation to that. Before that revelation, before that proclamation came. Look at verse 11 concerning these children of Israel. And it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. They are not going into captivity. They're still to go to captivity. And the Lord said, I'm thinking about you. Yes, I'll punish you. Yes, I'll send you to captivity. But it's not going to be a final, ultimate end. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The expected end of the captivity. I'll give that to you. The expected end of that uh, kind of imprisonment in uh, Babylon. I'll give the expected end to you. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Well, you see that the 70 years are about over. And then you call upon me, then I will answer you, and you shall seek me, verse 13, and find me. When well, you shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, verse 14, says the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. That was Revelation before the proclamation. Amos tells us, look at Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. He revealeth his secrets, the secret that we're going to go into captivity. The secret, they'll return from captivity. The secret that no human could have known except God revealed it. Amos says, God does nothing except he reveals to his own people, the prophets, to his own servants, the prophets, just like the Lord did for the children of Israel. And he said, a time of restoration will come. He's giving it to us too. That a time of rapture is coming, and we're not going to remain in this place forever. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm reading here from verse 13. We'll be studying about the people of Judah. They came out of the Babylonian captivity. And now let's talk about the church that the church too is expecting. There's going to be a proclamation. Children come up higher. Before that proclamation that the rapture will happen, there is a revelation the Lord has given us already in First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. The people that didn't understand uh, about the return from captivity of the children of Judah, they'll be sorrowful as if there was no hope. In the area, in the place, in Babylon, they told us to sing the song of Zion. How can we sing the song of the Lord in a strange land? Oh, Jerusalem, if I forget thee, let my right hand forget its cunning. If I forget, if I don't remember you, let my brain even forget the language of my land. And they were sorrowful because they didn't know there was an intention, there was revelation. They were going back. But now it says, about the church that will not be as sorrowful as if there were no hope in verse 14 for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so also them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this was say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord is coming again I said is coming again 
and we need to know that the time of the rapture is very near and we're living at the eve of the rapture and we should wake up because it says those of us that remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of and with the with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then tell me. Then tell me, we which are alive, it can happen at our own time. And we see a lot of signs already fulfilled, even for the second coming, which is uh, going to be seven years after the rapture. Because you have the rapture, then you have the great tribulation seven years, and then you have the coming uh, of the Lord, second coming of the Lord. And those signs of the second coming, they've been fulfilled right before us, which means the time of the rapture is very near. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, and so, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Look at chapter 5. Chapter 5. This is First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He'll come suddenly. But it's, he'll come surely, and he'll come certainly. He says, for when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren, ye brethren who are saved, ye brethren who are sanctified, ye brethren who are holy and godly, ye brethren that are expectant, waiting for the coming of the Lord. But ye brethren are not not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready. You'll be ready in Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 28. Mark chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 28. In Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 28, it says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is she tender and put a false leaves, ye know the summer is near. And then it says, So ye, like in like manner, when ye shall see this, uh, these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, it is near even at the doors it says when you see all the commissions in the world all the wars in the world all the insecurity in the world all the all the pestilences in the world all the plagues in the world all the sicknesses of the world all the things that are strange that were not happening before and you see them happening it says you know that it is near even at the doors very near I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled in verse 31 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away did anybody say amen over there verse 37 and what i say unto you i say unto all give me the word there watch he wants every one of us to watch i'm looking at matthew chapter 25 matthew chapter 25 i read from verse 1 matthew Chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. The wise one, they knew the time is at hand. If we're going to make any preparation, this is the time to make the preparation. If we're going to be ready for the coming of the bridegroom, here is the time, and this is the time to be ready. 
But the other people, they knew the Lord was coming, but they didn't know that he'll come just at that time. They were foolish, and it says in verse 3, they that were foolish took their lives, and he took no oil with them. And But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lives. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those uh, virgins arose and trimmed their lands, but the, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. They were not ready. The lambs were not burning, and the light was not shining. Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. And the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him. So the, to the marriage, and the door was shut, shut against them. They were not ready. I pray the doors will not be shut against you. I pray you'll be ready now that there's opportunity. And you know, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That you seek the face of the Lord and continually, continually, you keep that holiness knowing the trumpet can sound at any time. And the voice of God can call us from any time, come up higher. It says the doors were shut after, afterward. They came, came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But she answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch ye therefore. Here's the conclusion. Watch ye therefore. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Thank God I'll be ready. I said, Thank God I'll be ready. Let me hear your voice as you hear my voice. Point number two now, the response of people with prophetic perception. You see, there are always people that just, uh, uh, they know something, but they don't know it to take action. They know something, but they don't know it for it to stir them up and to make them rise up and move on and say, this is the hour. We must respond to what we're hearing. But then there, is, there are some other people too, when they hear, they know that this is my chance. And this is the time to come out of captivity and to go to the land of freedom and to go to the land of Judah, a place where God has put his own name. Point number two, the response of people with prophetic perception. The response of people with prophetic perception. I'm coming to Ezra chapter 1. Ezra chapter 1, and I'm reading here from verse 3. Ezra chapter 1, verse 3. Who is there among you? Of all his people, is God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem. Let him go up to Jerusalem. After 70 years, you can now go. After all these years of captivity, you are now released, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem, and whosoever remaineth in any place, think about that, whosoever remaineth, you don't have a mind to go, whosoever remaineth, you are not responding to the challenge, to the proclamation to rise up and go, you build mansion here and the mansions will tie you down you build businesses here and the businesses will tie you down whosoever remaineth you have married people of the land and because of that you don't want to leave them behind and they're not willing to go with you whosoever remaineth remaining behind it says uh, over here of that place that is sojourneth let the men of the place help him 
him with silver that he said let you know what to go but these ones are going and they're going to build at the temple as well as the city of jerusalem why don't you help them and so there are many people helping the children of god who are getting ready for the rapture there's some people they're printing the bible for us we thank god for that there's some people they're providing things for us that will help us and to make it and we read the bible and we read the books and we listen to the cds and we watch the dvd and we look at all the things that you know that will help us to make it at the time of the rapture although they are helping us those people those who are outside the kingdom of god they take it as a job they take it as a secular work that we're printing this are printing that and we're printing it for the church we're printing it for the people of god they say they want to go on the rapture and they write an article they write uh, whatever it is a book on the rapture will preach it for them uh, and their people will read and be ready but they're only helping us they are not going i will go i said i will go you will go in jesus name and whosoever remains in verse 4 in any place where he sojourneth let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with the beast that he is uh, with the transportation beside the free will of free for the lord god that is in jerusalem then arose then rose up the chief of the fathers of judah and benjamin and the priests and the levites with all them whose spirit god had raised whose spirit god had touched whose spirit god had stirred up to go up to build the house of the lord which is in jerusalem come to chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 1 chapter 2 verse 1 it says now these are the children of the province that went up that went up we're not interested in the people that stayed back in the people that remained in the people that will not rise up and take the challenge and respond to the proclamation we're only interested in the people that are waking and the people rise up and they want to move on and go out these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity and of those which had been carried away whom they could king of babylon had carried away unto babylon and came again unto jerusalem and judah they came again unto jerusalem and judah everyone unto his own city everyone unto his own city have you noticed what cyrus said to the people he said how many of you would like to go you're free and he says i'm not telling everybody i'm not compelling everybody but those who want to go he said you are free what's the lord saying is that the full message of the lord and is that the clear message of the lord that those who want to leave can leave and go out of babylon let's say the message of the lord we're looking at jeremiah chapter 15 jeremiah chapter 50 and i'm reading here from verse 6 jeremiah chapter 50 we're reading from verse 6 my people has been lost sheep their shepherds have caused them to go astray they have turned them away on the mountains and they have gone from mountain to hill and they have forgotten the resting place a lot of those people that went to captivity as they spent 10 years 20 years 30 years 70 years they forgot their resting place but all the same look at what god is saying in verse 8 remove out of the midst of babylon go forth out of the land of the chaldeans and be as a he goat before the flocks leap up like the he goats with strength and with joy with excitement and with cheerfulness and leap and hop and move on god wanted everyone to leave god wanted everyone to get out of captivity 
just like today he wants everyone in the church to make it at the time of the rapture cyrus might put a limitation and cyrus might say okay those who want to be ready you want to concentrate on the rapture that's okay for you you want to concentrate on business that's all right for you you want to concentrate on building something in the world that's okay for you that's cyrus but god is saying everyone get ready i'll be ready i said i'll be ready i'm not going to allow the limitation of cyrus to say okay cyrus gives the liberty if you want to go you can go if you want to remain you can remain look at jeremiah chapter 51 jeremiah chapter 51 i'm reading from verse 6 jeremiah chapter 51 verse 6 flee out of the midst of babylon everyone flee out from the midst of babylon and deliver every man his soul be not cut off in high iniquity for this is the time of the lord's vengeance he will render unto her a recompense babylon has been a golden cup in the lord's sand that made all the earth drunken the nations are drunken of her wine therefore the nations are mad babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed Howl for her and take balm for for the for her pain if if so be she shall be healed and then it goes on to tell us that we actually should not remain there it says in verse 10 for the lord has brought forth our righteousness come let us declare in zion the work of the lord our god he wants everyone out of babylon don't uh, stay with only the limited provision of cyrus doesn't want to go back and go back doesn't want to go up to jerusalem can go up and those who remain can help them help them to move on i've decided i'm going to make it myself i'm going to get out of babylon myself when the trumpet shall sound, I will be ready. Somebody there, when the trumpet shall sound, when the trumpet shall sound, you'll be ready, will be ready in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 48, Isaiah chapter 48, I'm reading from verse 20, i have read it to you. The same prophet Jeremiah that prophesied that 70 years will be accomplished in Babylon. That same prophet Jeremiah said, everyone come out. And the same Isaiah that prophesied that Cyrus will be born. And Cyrus will bring deliverance and release to the people. That same Isaiah said, everybody get out of Babylon. Look at it. Isaiah chapter 40 age verse 20 go ye forth of babylon flee from the chaldeans with a voice of singing declare ye tell this utter each even to the end of the earth say ye the lord has redeemed his servant jacob and so there's no permission from god for anyone to remain behind i will not remain behind I said, I will not remain behind. I come to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. And you know, this is not just talking to the children of Israel now. It's not just talking to the people of Judah now. It's talking to you. It's talking to me. Come out of that Babylon. Come out of that a place of darkness. And make sure that when the trumpet shall sound, you are ready. Look at Revelation chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 2 revelation chapter 18 we're reading from verse 2 and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is falling is falling and it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth that committed have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies and i beheld another voice 
I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. My people, if you're a child of God, is saying, Get ready. Get ready for the rapture. Get ready to come out of Babylon and come out of this world. It says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that she be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. I pray you will come out. And when the trumpet shall sound, you'll be ready in Jesus' name. The people that didn't come out, what happened to them? They were blind. They were blind to the opportunity they had blind to the proclamation and blind to their privilege instead of coming out look at them they just remain behind they say but you know if you want to go we'll help you if you want to depart we'll help you we'll give you riches we'll give you some amount we'll give you some free will offering that's not enough why are you staying in babylon while you are sending offering, sending offering, giving offering, and you yourself, you are not ready. Those people were blind. I will not be blind. I want to look, you to look at Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42, and I'm reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 42, and we're reading from verse 18. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 18, here is the word of the Lord. Hear ye there. And look ye blind that he may see. Then it says in verse 19, Who is blind but my servant? Who is blind but my servant? The people that are serving the Lord, they are servants of the Lord, but they are not getting ready themselves. They are helping other people to get ready. They are assisting other people to get ready. And they are encouraging other people to get ready. There are things in their lives that do not allow them to be ready. But they are not ready. And yet they are servants of the Lord who is blind, but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I said, who is blind, I see that is perfect. They serve the Lord perfectly. And they do everything that they ought to do. And they dot every I and they cross every T, but they are not ready ready for the coming of the Lord and they don't bother about that but they will help other people and they will encourage other people they will counsel some people will even forget their families they forget their families and they're helping other families and encouraging them and they visit they go from here to there to there and they themselves they're not ready it says so is blind and see that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant seeing many things things that observest not and opening the ears but he hears not he hears not when he should hear and be ready is not hearing and is not ready but the lord will make you ready i said the lord will make me ready john chapter 9 john chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 40 john Chapter 9, verse 14. And some of, the, uh, some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Are we blind also? They could answer that question. Jesus brought salvation. They didn't see him as Savior. They were blind. And Jesus brought forgiveness. They didn't see him as the one that has authority on earth to forgive sin. They were blind. And Jesus was bringing healing and conversion to many people and was promising them the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn because they shall be comforted. And blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs shall be the kingdom kingdom of God. They heard everything and yet they did not respond. They were blind. They should be asking the Lord, are we blind? I pray you will not be blind. If you are not blind, you will respond to the message. If you are not blind, you'll get ready for the time because the Lord is coming. And we're at the door. We're very close. And we are at the eve of the rapture. If you are not blind, you will realize that you'll get up and make preparation for the rapture. We're looking at Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. I read from verse 35. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let's 
loins be guarded about and your lights burning and your lights burning and ye yourselves like men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. He'll find your watching. Verily, I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if it shall come in the second watch, or come in a third watch and find them so blessed are those servants and days know that if the good man of the house had known not what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through be ye therefore ready also be ye therefore you are saved you are a child of god don't take this for granted the proclamation is coming the announcement is coming the pronouncement is coming christ is about to come and the trump of god shall sound and the voice of god will call the people rise up and then those who are dead they'll wake up they'll come out of their graves and those of us who are alive we shall be together with them but then we have a preparation to make and it says be therefore ready also for him for the son of man cometh at an hour when you seek not but as we come back to ezra ezra we're coming back to ezra when the proclamation was made it was only the remnant, only a remnant, only a fraction of the people that responded. And the same thing is going to happen at the end of time when Christ will come. And even when he will appear to the house of Israel, only a remnant will partake of the goodness of the Lord. Ezra chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 8. Ezra chapter 9, reading from verse 8. The remnant pictured in prophecy. The remnant pictured in prophecy. It tells us in Ezra chapter 9 verse 8, And now for a little space, grace has been showed from, uh, from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. To leave us a remnant to escape. Ezra realized not everybody left, not everybody went out, just a remnant. And you know what the prophecy had said? Nothing takes God by surprise. All the things that happen, remember, is the one declaring the end from the beginning. Let's look at Isaiah. Just a remnant, a remnant, a remnant. And on the final day, only a remnant will make it. I pray you'll be part of that remnant. Isaiah chapter 10, Isaiah chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 20. Isaiah chapter 10, reading from verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, you see that, that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of, ja of Jacob shall no more against stay upon him that smote them. They will not stay with the people that held them captive, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. In truth, look at verse 21. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, even unto the mighty God. The remnant shall return, and they return to the almighty God. It's the remnant that will escape. It's the remnant that will respond. And the same thing is going to happen at the time of the rapture. There are many, there are many people that go to different churches. There are many people that say, I'm born again. There are many people that say, I believe in the Lord. There are many people that say, I'm expecting the rapture. But only a remnant will make it. That's prophecy. That's what the Lord has said. Look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 30 joel chapter 2 and we're reading it from verse 30 
it says and i will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke it's talking about the time of the great revolution all the events that will be happening but such a one and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the lord come now look at verse 32 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be delivered look at this for in mount zion and in jerusalem shall be deliverance as the lord has said and in the remnant in the remnant in the remnant whom the lord shall call that's why you need to make sure that you are not just part of the crowd because it's a remnant of the children of israel that will make each on that day look at amos chapter 5 Amos chapter 5, just a remnant. Amos chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 15. Amos chapter 5, reading from verse 15. It tells us in verse 15, Teach the evil and love the good and establish judgment, justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of joseph will be gracious unto the remnant of joseph and that's of the people of israel when you say joseph there is talking about the people look at micah chapter 5 micah chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 13 micah chapter 5 reading from verse 13 it says the graven images also will i cut off and thy standing images out of the midst of thee and thou shalt be no shall no more worship the work of thine hand go back to verse uh, to verse 11 it says in verse 11 micah chapter 5 sorry from verse 7 from verse 7 and the remnant of jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from the lord as the showers upon the grass that tarries not for man nor waited for the sons of man that is the people who are not going to wait for other people what do you think about this proclamation what do you think about this approaching rapture what do you think about this restoration they are not waiting for other people a remnant there will be men and women of their own mind and they will say we're coming out and thank god you will come out look at sephaniah sephaniah chapter 3 sephaniah i'm reading from chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 13 sephaniah chapter 3 we're looking at verse 13 and the remnant of israel shall do no iniquity these people are getting ready for the coming of the lord there'll be a remnant just a few of them just a part of them just a fraction of them and the remnant of israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth for they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid you notice there just a remnant come to the new testament in romans chapter 9 romans chapter 9 reading from verse 27 romans chapter 9 verse 27 in romans chapter 9 verse 27 it says Isaiah also cried concerning israel though the number of the children of israel be as the sand of the sea a remnant shall be saved 
a remnant shall be saved. And so as you look at Israel, and you look at the people that came out, and you said it was just a remnant. It was a picture of the prophecy that was yet but fulfilled. The Lord is coming. And as you look at the white church, as the whole church, as the many people that refer to themselves as Christians and as part of the church, when the rapture shall take place, only the remnant will go. And the point for you is to make sure you are part of that remnant. I'll be part of that remnant. I will be part of that remnant. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 17. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And the dragon, that's the devil, was wroth, was angry with the woman, that's the mother, that's Israel, that produced the Messiah and produced the believing few. He was angry and he made war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The people who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in reality and the people who will be found as believers when Christ will come, there will be a remnant having the testimony of Jesus Christ. There will be a remnant keeping the commandments of Jesus Christ. When the Lord comes, will you be there? When the Lord comes, will you be ready? Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 13, verse 23. Then one of them, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Will there be a remnant? Will there be a fraction? Will there be a few? Or is it everyone calling, Lord, Lord, that shall be saved? Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in, into the straight gate, for many and same will seek to enter in, and they shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and are shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. There will be multitudes of people that will miss the rapture. There will be the multitude of people. They will not be among the few. And they will be saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Then shall ye begin to say, you don't know us. We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou hast touched in our streets. We heard you. You stood before us. And we stood before you. And we heard your word. We are the crusade. We are the teaching. We are the seminar or at the retreat, or at the conference. You are the one talking there, and you are taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not where ye are. Depart from me, ye all ye that work iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when he shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out, and they shall come from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there will be last that shall be first, and there are first that shall be last. What does that mean? There are people, they will enter in eventually, but they will enter in from the back row because they were forced. And when they were converted, when they were born again, they were full of fire, they were full of fervency, and they were full of the Holy Ghost, they were full of faith, they were running and running and doing the will of God. But years are past now. 
70 years have come and that uh, young man who was young when he became born again uh, he was you know born again at the age of 30 and now he's 40 now he's 50 and now he's 60 and the lord is about to come but he doesn't know but he says i'm 60 now i'm 70 now i'm going old and they're dragging their feet and the people who are last and the people who just became born again recently they're still full of the seal and the passion and the power and they run ahead and they'll be forced they come in the kingdom and almost before the door is shut the one who was passed before who is not dragging his feet because of old age dragging his feet because there's old timer dragging his feet because he knows it all he'll come in last just before the door is shut he comes in and then when he comes in the other people have taken all the crowns they have taken all the stars and they're taking all the reward and he's just there and he's uh, breathing up and down thank god i make it thank god i made it and then he looks up and he looks at the stars shining in the crowns of the people that came in before him and then said if i had known i would have put in more energy and more strength and more commitment and more consecration i will not slow down i will not slack down i will not be the first that will become the last i remain in the forefront somebody there i'm going to remain in the forefront in the forefront of consecration, I remain. In the forefront of fervency, I remain. In the forefront of evangelization, I remain. In the forefront of edifying the church, I remain. In the forefront of laying every sin at the altar, I remain. Not only that I'm going to be among the remnant that will make it on that final day, I'll be the first to enter in and great will be my reward. How about you? I said, how about you? I said, how about you? If you don't answer, I will read more scriptures to convince you that you ought to get ready. I said, how about you? You'll be ready, stand up and talk to the Lord. You want to be ready. You want to be ready. The proclamation is in the air. The Lord is coming and the Lord is about to arrive now. And he says, the voice of the, of the Lord, of the archangel will speak. And then those who are dead, they will rise up. And then those of us who are still alive will be with them. We're living at the eve of the restoration, the eve of the rapture. Wake up, wake up, wake up, and tell the Lord, O oh Lord, here am I, I'll be ready. Here am I, I will be ready. The revelation that precedes the proclamation, we're ready about all that, that the prophets have declared that Christ is coming. And Christ is, is coming. And since Christ is coming, he says, make sure you are saved. Make sure you are sanctified. Make sure you are holy. Make sure you are righteous. Make sure that everything that ought to be put in place is in place. And you are ready. And we'll see the response of the people of prophetic perception. They had perception of the prophecy of the word of God. And because of that, they responded. Why don't you respond? Why don't you respond? And be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And say, Lord, I want to be ready. Any recall there, take it away. Any spot there, take it away. Any stain there, take it away. Any sin that shouldn't be in your life, take it away. Don't be blind. Don't be blind. Don't be blind. Who are the blind people? Those who hear the Lord is coming and they don't realize and they're not getting ready. Respond like people of prophetic perception. Be among the, preg uh, among the remnant that is big church in uh, prophecy. Among the remnant that is pictured in a prophecy and say i'm not just going to remain behind i'm going to make it i'm going to make it i'm going to make it make sure you're ready be ready when he comes